All right, gentlemen, we are uh, we are officially recording. Nice. And, uh, All right. Welcome to what is this? This is now episode eight for us guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. Eight. Eight, right. eight or nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with eight. Let's go with eight for for sake of conversation. Maybe there's one we want to forget. If, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there so, might be one that we forgot because we just drank. <laughs> <laughs> so episode eight, eight, we'll call it eight of the wine bros. Uh, we got our friend Steve Gage back and this is, uh, this is a dealer's choice episode. So none of us have talked about what bottle we're bringing to the table. Uh, everybody's bringing something completely uh, new and different and just something they either have tried and they want to talk about or something that's totally new to them and they haven't tried and we're going to do it live and see if we like it or don't. So anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do today. So do some some quick introductions. David Britt's here coming to you from Los Angeles. Sega Isho coming to you from Detroit. Dave Roberts coming at you from Chicago. Steve calling in from Napa Valley. Awesome. So Steve is wearing, uh, as we discussed before we started recording, a muted shirt. Steve is known for his colorful collection of shirts. This is one of the more milder ones, but he's looking snazzy. It's a beautiful day in the Napa Valley. So uh, we're excited to have you on. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I did try to find a solid color shirt at the store, but all these musicians were ahead of me and bought all the, the black shirts. So <laughs> all I could do. No, nothing of that sentence is true. No part <laughs> of it. Yeah, I didn't look for a black shirt. You're right. Anyway. So Steve, since you're our guest, dude, I feel like you've got to be the one to tell us what you, you brought to the table. Okay. Really? I feel like we should, we should, cl he should close because he'll probably have, he'll probably, uh, you know, I'll kick okay. all of us. Okay. Why don't we do this by temperature? Who's in the coldest climate? They should go first. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's either it was 60 degrees today. Although it's, it's 47 on the thermometer right now. Yeah. It was like 50 something here today. A lot of wind. All right. All right I'll start. <clears throat> So um, I just uh, wanted to do something that you could get, anybody could get at the grocery store. So um, I popped into Whole Foods today to pick up some stuff uh, and I just kind of perused the wine section. Um, we're having a roast, uh, a whole roast chicken tonight. So I wanted something on the lighter side, but um, I still do like red wines whenever I can get my hands on one. So I went with a Pinot. Um, and then I saw as I was looking around, you know, I wanted to find something that wasn't too expensive. Um, so I found this, uh, this bottle of this uh, La Crema 2017 from Willamette. And I went with this bottle because um, Sarah and I found a Willamette we did not like. We've enjoyed all of them. Um, they tend to be a lot, uh, they tend to be pretty similar to um, some Burgundies that we've liked. Um, uh, and I've heard that it's the same latitude. Uh, I, I think it might be within one or two, um, and that that's part of the why they, they have similar uh, flavor. But um, so that's what I went with. A little bit of why, a long-winded why. Um, should we he just go around and see what we're all drinking, and then we'll, and then we'll all then we'll all drink and explain. And Chad, or do you want me to just kind of run this down quickly and then and then pass the bot baton? You're muted. Unmute. Prince, you're muted. Hey, uh, you <laughs> think this was show one? Um, learning the oh, business. Learning the business. Say, yeah, let's let's do what you just did. Start there, and then um, we can all do that, and then we'll we'll come back and taste, and you can give us okay. your notes. Okay. So, Seg, you want to go next? Let's do it. So the one I went with um, is probably going to be unknown to most people. Um, it certainly was to me um, before visiting the wine thief in Napa Valley and placed a blacked out order 
which cost me <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> and when it arrived, uh, I, I was less mad at myself because of the contents. This wine oh, yeah, called yeah. G Mountain Reserve. It's a cab from Napa Valley. It's a 2013. Uh, Jamie and I love this wine. Um, basically, anytime I can, I can re-up my cellar with these. I try to keep like five or six of these at all times. Um, I grab them. So this, this is my choice today. Nice. Beautiful. Don't tell Andy Very. that you're drinking it because he'll call you. <laughs> Very good bottle. Very good bottle. Yeah. I've got a few of those too. All right. I'll go next. We drank all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I opened, I actually opened it, uh, yesterday and uh so it is uh it's very ready to drink today so i'm going rosé so this is the 2017 azure uh rosé oh, um nice. as steve is fond of this uh wine as well and I, I, steve i think we've we've told a good story about this wine uh before um but uh you know julian fayard Wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, rosé. Probably my top two or three rosés on the planet mm -hmm. uh, coming out of Napa Valley. Um, I just, I don't, it's, it's an insult to the wine to call it a porch pounder, but it just drinks so smoothly that it, it really is. Um, but just, just a beautiful rosé. Is it an insult though? I mean, maybe. <laughs> But um, maybe it's a good thing. But 2017, a zero rosé. Nice. Okay. Well, like many of you, I've been digging through the cellar, looking for those bottles that, you know, just don't need to be in the cellar any longer. Um, and I came across this one. And I, I wanted to, of course, pick something that, like you said, no one's ever heard of. Um, so this is from one of my favorite producers, which is Ridge. Oh yeah. Uh, legendary winemaker, Paul Draper, arguably one of the best winemakers really to come out of the States in the last 50 years. Um, I fell in love with this particular bottling. I don't know if you can see the vintage, but it is a 93. Um, and you would think a 27 year old California Zin, it's either going to be amazing or undrinkable. Uh, the winemaking from this place was always top, absolutely top notch. So I feel pretty good that it's going to, have gone the distance. Um, I picked this one because I went to a, a party with Ridge Vineyards before I ever got in the wine business. And it happened to be up at a, an estate in Sonoma, the vineyard designate Alegria Vineyard. It's actually out at the vineyard. And I found this to be one of my favorite wines, ended up talking to the owner who said, you know, I've got a bunch in my cellar, I'll sell them to you. So I bought a vertical of probably eight years right from the owner's property. Oh my and God. I've never had one and that was 25 years ago. So I think it's time. Yeah. I think so, so I haven't opened mine yet because I, I think this is going to fade pretty quickly. Dude, so <laughs> I'm, I'm ex a 93 Zen. Like this is definitely, this is like a, a dice yeah. roll, man. Let's Let me get it kind of close. like the labels a little torn up. I don't know if that's from rodents or just, you know, bad handling, but yeah. uh, anyway, and the, the fill level is a little bit low. So I think yeah. it's time to go. So I'm going to go so ahead and you, open you it. Said, you said it's going to, you think it's going to fade quickly. Can you just kind of describe to maybe the layman out there what, yeah. what you mean by that? So I would say with the Pinot that you're drinking, it's, it's a young wine. It's going to have a lot of aromatics, good acidity. It needs some air. It needs to oxidize mm -hmm. to be pleasant. You're going to swirl it in your glass and, you know, make all those wine drinking faces as you're bringing in all the air. Um, a wine that's got this much age, I think, is already oxidized. It's had time, you know, with a little passage of air through the cork. Um, it doesn't need a whole lot of oxygen. And sometimes these older wines taste delicious when you open them, and then 20 minutes later, they're gone. Whereas a younger oh. wine, like one you're drinking, and even the, that, the G, I've had that wine recently. That's a massive wine. So from the time you open it, maybe 45 minutes, going to get better as you get oxygen in the wine uh, i think that will not be the case with this wine so we'll see so i was afraid to open it but here we go 
And Steve, what, can you show up? How are you going to open it with the uh, the you know the wine key that uh, is uh, best for opening vintage wine? Or what? Are no, you, I'm going to use gonna the go? standard key and okay. hope for the best. Okay. If the cork breaks, well, you know, the cork I know breaks. there's a. The, the proper tool, the Asso, yeah, meant for older corks. Uh, I drink a lot of young wines. I've never owned one. So, you know, Christmas is, is coming. The, is that the one with like two pro, two prongs that kind yeah. of bend really out a little bit? They're really hard to use, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I never kind of like do that. So this cork feels like going through a bar of soap. It, it is not giving me much resistance. So it's got a lot of air in there. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. This might be a challenge. Good thing you recorded. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Anyway, carry on. I'll just keep working on this. And all right. Well then, we'll, well, as soon as you as soon as you work that open, we'll uh we'll come back to you because I want to get your immediate response on that. But yeah. I'll dive into this when I when I first opened it. I was getting a lot of uh, you know sort of that. Uh, actually more fruitiness than I would expect from a Willamette. Uh, what I like typically about it is that they are a lot more earthy. Um, this one is definitely a little bit more uh, that bright fruit. Um, uh, and now that it's open a little bit and getting some of that air, I'm getting, um, I'm getting some, of those, some of that earthiness right back, a little bit of that sort of uh, baking spice. Yeah, everything that you would expect from a Willamette, it's just, um, you know, it, it, it finishes clean. It hits everything all the way back, um, uh, sort of light to medium tannins, um, uh, but still fi it, it finishes really, really clean and fresh um, uh, and just light on the palate, uh, really good. Nice, a little, a little earth there. It's starting to starting to open up a little bit more earth uh, on the nose, um, but yeah, when I first popped it, it was real big, um, real big sort of dark fruits. Um, did you refrigerate it uh, at all, or did you? Is it all? Uh, so I got it today. So I popped it in the fridge for twenty minutes. So it's it's chilled but not cold, which is how I like my my Pinot. It's a little bit like you know they say cellar temperature. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good. It'll go great with uh, uh, roast ch uh, chicken tonight. Oh, darn right. Zag, how 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 you doing over there? So on the nose, I'm getting a lot of just soil, a lot of graphite, a lot of uh, blackberries. You know, the dark cherry, the the standard stuff you'd you'd get smelling a, a Napa cab. But it's very very aromatic, and I'm gonna dive in here. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's um, you know, not super tannic. It's not, it's not as tannic as a lot of Napa cabs, um, but they're there, and it's not not much burn at all for a big Napa cab. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens, you know, over the course of the next hour or so as it opens up a little bit more. But man, it's just really smooth. It's like, it's like drinking caramel. It's like very silky and, and smooth. It's, it's, that's why I like it. Awesome. Okay, let's throw it a gauge while he, he, he just poured himself a glass there. Let's yeah. Not, I not poured myself a glass of cork uh, as well. <laughs> the cork just disintegrated, but it, it was sealed beautifully. Uh, okay. just, it had, didn't have much going on. I don't know if you could see the color there. Uh, there's a bit of a brown, it's a, not a bit, it's a lot of brown around the edge. Mm -hmm. Remind even old burgundy uh it's not a, a wine with a ton of body and again mm -hmm. you'd expect that with this age mm -hmm. a lot of sort of pencil lead coming off the the nose but also some ripe fruit kind of blackberry jam really really ripe fruit um a little bit on the vineyard it's over in sonoma county i thought you know napa guys got to support the other side a little, <laughs> little bit um 76% Zinfandel uh, and 5% Alicante Boucher. So, you know, grapes with a lot of dark color. Uh, it smells quite interesting. 
Steve, the I'm color on that is so great. It doesn't look like it lost a lot of color. You know, probably not in the video. It, it's still pretty dark, but it is definitely brown around the edges, which you would expect with an older wine. Yeah. And it's a medium body. It's not the classic Zin Petit Syrah. But I think Ridge always made wines that were well balanced and not just making those really big, fruity, bomb wines that are fun to drink, but uh, maybe, you know, not true to the craft. Mm. Well, I like that. This video makes the glass look huge. It does. It's bigger <laughs> than my head. Ha ha ha. Okay. That looks good, buddy. All right. I, I've got to say, it's a stunning wine. It's um, beautiful acidity, and there's still some fruit to it, which I, I didn't expect. I thought I'd be dumping it out on camera, you know, retreating to the <laughs> cellar. All right. I guess I'll save that other bottle for the next time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's great. We'll, we'll see how this goes in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. Better, hopefully, better hurry up and finish that bottle. Yeah, hopefully down the pallet. <laughs> yeah. So um, for yes. me... Uh, on the Azure, I'm getting, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of peach, honeysuckle. Um, it is, you know, this is just a preeminent rosé. Um, you know, obviously really smooth and easy to drink. Um, no burn whatsoever. Alcohol on it is. Uh, Actually, I'm not even sure. Oh, 12.5. So this is, this wow. is light. Um, so you can drink that all day. You really could drink that all day. And Steve, <laughs> I think um, when I first started drinking this wine, it's because we had a friend that was at Covert. And that's how we sort of got introduced to the wine, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, maybe I should shouldn't divulge, but uh, yeah, so our dear friend John was uh, there playing a corporate gig, uh, invited me to come watch the set, and I arrived at the time I was supposed to show up, but they were running late. It was one of those you know, corporate gigs, and the owner of the winery said, well, make yourself comfortable. You could sit here in the office, and we have the rosé on tap, so just help yourself. Well, they went way over schedule. Right, so about an hour and a half later, uh, they said, oh, you can come out now. <laughs> Do I have to? So when I was <laughs> yeah. first introduced to this wine, I was introduced in a, in a grand way. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I fell in love with it. It's great but, wine. But, I mean, it's, you know, from, from a rosé perspective, I just, I, I think they do it right. And obviously, Julian is the winemaker, and it's got a lot of that French Provence sort of style to it. Yeah, I believe he grew up in Provence. Yeah. And, you know, while he's become arguably one of the top Cabernet makers in Napa Valley, uh, I think he's, he holds to his roots. That's a beautiful wine. Yeah. So, so for anyone watching and you want to pick a rosé and you don't know what to pick, you can basically never go wrong if you pick a rosé from Provence. Like, if it says Provence on the bottle, it's likely going to be at least good. And at any price point, you can get them, you know, for eight, nine bucks a bottle sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to look for if, if you're looking for a rosé. And then, you know, like, like Brits is talking about, this is a Napa rosé, right? And it's made with like a, almost like a French style, right? So it's basically mm -hmm. from Provence, you know, via Napa Valley. David, does it, does it give an appellation on the grapes? It doesn't. I feel like it's... Um, the only it says you know, produced and bottled by uh, Azur Wines Fair Play California. Okay, interesting. That's so I think I think Fair Play is Contra Costa County. Yeah, which would make sense. Um, you know, with the price of Cabernet fruit here in Napa, at twenty thirty thousand dollars a ton, it's very hard to make rosé. At least rosé that's affordable. Right. Uh, but there's you know, some of those. The grapes that you would find in Provence, probably some Grenache, Mouvedre in there. Yeah. Um, you're going to be cheaper outside of the valley. It doesn't make it a lower quality wine. In fact, it might make it a better quality wine. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, and I, I love the bottle. I don't know if, 
I fully showed it before, but if you look at, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, a long bottle, which is slightly prob problematic with a rosé. I think we were talking on an earlier episode about, you know, there's certain rosés that you want to open and you want to, you know, you'll finish a bottle and then you only finish half of the second one. So this would be one of those cases where you drink a bottle, you know, you finish half of the second one, you got to put it in the refrigerator and it's a pretty tall bottle. So trying to find a, a spot to put it in becomes a little problematic, but it's just beautiful. Um, you know, the gold, uh, it's got a gold label, uh, gold kind of embossed, uh, you know, logo here. It's just a really, really beautiful bottle. How's the acidity on the finish? Is there a lot of burn really or no? Low. Really low. Um, it's, you know, and again, you know, I had mentioned I'd opened it yesterday. So, you know, it's, it's lost a little bit of, of the natural acidity that would have been there. Um, but uh, it's, it's a low acid wine to begin with. And still, I'm probably, I'm probably picking up a little bit more minerality too, because it's been open a bit, but um, it's, it's, it's drinking very close to the way it drank yesterday. Nice. Uh, so this one, as I'm sipping on it, um, it is opening up a lot. It's, it's sort of heading towards that direction of the more of the Willamette style that I'm, that I thought I was getting when I got this wine. Um, it was definitely heavier on the fruit at the beginning. It's starting to head more towards that earthiness, getting some of that leather, um, uh, some of that on the palate. Um, so it's, it's starting to trend towards, you know, what I thought I was buying when I, when I first bought it. So a little bit of what Steve was saying that, you know, younger wines need some oxygen so that they can open up and really, um, get to a place where you'd expect them to be. Yeah, definitely. This one is, you know, as it's sitting open a little bit longer, the tannins are really making themselves much more known. I don't know if it's that or the spicy Italian sausage we had for dinner, but <laughs> Some, something is just ripping that moisture out of my mouth every time I take a sip and it's I, I just I just love that mouth feel yeah. Totally. yeah that's a wine that would probably have quite a long life if you were patient oh yeah from that vintage oh, yeah. and that no style. patience <laughs> we're not judging it's just a statement you know when I was I've got three bottles sitting here when I was trying to figure out which one to open I was thinking about Jamie because after these tastings, I take the bottle and then Jamie and I finish it. And she absolutely loves this wine. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to open this one because I know she loves it. And I don't want to take a flyer on something. <laughs> <laughs> one of my other wines, Brits, was this bad boy. Ooh, oh, no, you cannot go wrong with that. So I've not had it. So I, I don't know anything about it. All I know is Brits told me to buy it. And I did. And then my other one, Brits, uh, I know you'd like. Ooh, a little CDP. Yeah. But I, almost I, got with, a, I almost got a CDP at the store. Yeah. I went with a known quantity uh, on my wife's behalf. All right. And my, and my glass was a birthday gift from Leo. So that's why oh. I'm rocking this glass. Uh, I saw Gage do a little uh, a little side shuffle over there. You want to explain what's going over? What's going on? Yeah, there was so much cork floating in that that uh, I actually <laughs> did dump it on the ground, which oh, you man. can do when you're in your backyard. Just don't do it in the kitchen. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was that or if it was that it went south faster than you expected. No, um, it just I had tried to sip around the pieces of cork, but I was getting more mm -hmm. cork than wine, so. Yep. rather than show you that i just gave a little subtle dump and the next pour is a lot cleaner it's um actually you can see why i'm scrolling it there that brown yeah. color now i'm seeing it it's now not, it's it not yep. unpleasant oh it's frozen perfectly right there where i really get a nice you really see that brown <laughs> there you go when it froze you kind of look like james gandolfini a little bit <laughs> <laughs> thanks uh i'm gonna go ahead and take a stab at the fact that this wine was not filtered at bottling. Uh, you know, most commercial wines are filtered to keep them cleaner. Most people don't like chunks in their wine. But I know Paul Draper was kind of an old school, you know, trained in Bordeaux uh, and would only filter when necessary. But again, you can't really see it in there. But it, this is kind of cloudy. It's, it's got yeah. some texture to it. It's not a, a bad thing. No. Like, I kind of enjoy it. Well, I mean, Brits, your, your jam is that unfiltered, um, is it Raymond, the unfiltered Raymond? Uh, Newton. 
Newton. That's what it is. Yeah, Chardonnay. that's. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a nice nice Chardonnay. I mean, I, you know, it's it's definitely my top three. I got I gotta say, um, you know, Moonshine is 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 my number one Chardonnay. Um, you know, even people who don't like Chardonnay should drink that wine because it's just yeah, it's it's the way to go. Um, you know, and I think, um, you know, there's, there's a few of those, uh, that are out there, but, uh, Newton's definitely something I like. Um, one of the things I thought would be fun for us to talk about just quickly before we, uh, we jump off. Um, it, we just, we had a holiday yesterday cause we're taping this on Monday. Um, and you know, I figured it'd be fun to talk about what we all, uh, opened for Easter. <laughs> Which part of the day? Well, I mean, you could talk about one or all. I mean, okay. free zone here. Mm, good to know. Yeah. Well, I'll just go there since I already opened the can of worms. Yeah. Uh, there was a little rosé earlier in the day. It's a nice, okay. simple local rosé. Um, and then a little Prosecco with dinner. Ooh, all right. Uh, very non-traditional. We did a chicken Caesar salad for dinner, okay. which doesn't say anything about Easter. But, you know, the weather's been pretty nice up here and it, just seemed like the thing to do yeah. homemade dressing you know a lot of garlic anchovy that would beat up a big red wine so nice acidic prosecco worked beautifully there you go do you, How about you? uh well i went uh i might i might surprise you guys may not uh, but i went with um i went with a, a 2020 Le Joux brewed by the alarmist brewery Okay. An unfiltered New England, uh, New England pale ale, uh, or New England IPA. Uh, very good. Um, 6% alcohol, uh, I think brewed locally here in Chicago. And, uh, it's these, uh, New England style IPA, double IPA, double dry hops has kind of become my go-to, uh, beers of late. Um, so, uh, Sarah opened a, um, white burgundy. Uh, I had a sip of that with um, our dinner. That was just kind of a hodgepodge of what was in the fridge after we'd done our Easter celebrations. Um, so no, no fancy wines for me yesterday. Zag, why don't you go ahead? Buy me some time. I'm I'm looking something up here. Okay. All right. So um, I went, and this is not in honor of our guest, uh, but you know, it's just what I opened up. I opened up a uh, 2012. Moonshine, How Mountain. Uh, that was my uh, my Easter wine yesterday. Incredible. Um, didn't even give it time to sit. I think I probably poured it three minutes after I opened it. It was ready to go um, right away. Uh, so that's what we celebrated with yesterday. I'll admit, I when you texted me that, I definitely thought about going into my um, my blacklist uh, reserve <laughs> that we've. You know, we we bought some wines for the boys in their birth year, uh, and every now and again, I, I squirrel away a couple of bottles I think will be really nice um, for the long run. And I've got a couple of the Moonshine Blacklist uh, aging with the boys' nice. birth year wines. And I what almost went birthday? down and grabbed one of those last night. <laughs> Dave, what uh, what are their birth years? Uh, uh, Owen, the first, uh, was uh, 2014, and Dylan was 2016. So the 2016 just came out last fall. Nice. All right. So Great we years. started. We started with uh, some sparkling wine, some bubbles from. It's called Halyard. It's from Not Wines from Sonoma. Um, I don't know anything about this vineyard, but it's um, something that I found on Last Bottle, which is a cool app to buy wines. Um, heavily discounted sometimes. Uh, it's free to sign up and it just has a different wine every day and then they have various marathons. Um, but every time it pops up, I think it's like 18 bucks on sale from like 40 or 50 or whatever it is. And I try to buy as many as I can because it's really, really good sparkling wine. It's nice and light. It's not going to give you a headache. And um, that background noise will definitely give you a headache. But we started with that. Then we moved on to some rosé. And then finally with dinner, went with uh, another wine from uh, Last Bottle. And it's a Breckenridge Genmar Vineyard 2015 cab. Um, 
that's really nice as well. But Steve, it was funny that you mentioned Ridge and I'm, this is not an ad. We are not sponsored, although we are available for that. So on last bottle today, they've got a, um, they've got a Ridge Zin up on there today. Ooh, which uh, vineyard is it? I can't quite read it. It's uh, Benito Doozy Ranch Paso Robles, Paso Robles, 2018. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is a legendary vineyard, the Doozy Ranch. That's going to be a big, high alcohol, rich wine. I might have to go on and order some when we're done okay. here. Yeah, I mean, it's so, 20, 29 so, bucks. Here's the problem really? with um, lastbottle.com. They do not deliver. It's the problem and the benefit <laughs> that they do not deliver in uh, Illinois. So they do these deliver guys, to my house. <laughs> these, guys, these guys send all kinds of notes about all this great wine they're ordering very inexpensively on last bottle. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> hey, do you know those guys? I don't know them personally, but uh, the last time I ordered, ordered like on a Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, a guy rolls up to my door. Here's your wine. It was just a local guy. It wasn't even FedEx or anything. It was great. That's Very awesome. Very personal service. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Again, not, I'm not plugging them. I don't know them, but the service was great. And I got a box of wine, which makes me happy. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I bought a couple things. Uh, there was a marathon last week, so we picked up a couple things on there. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it's, it, it's a fun app to, to buy wine on. Um, mm -hmm. so guys, I think that that was fun and I think we should do more of these. I, I kind of like the, uh, the whole idea of not knowing what you guys are going to bring to the table. Yeah. You know what I think, what I think is interesting is that we all, so we didn't talk about what we were going to bring. We just said dealer's choice. Everybody just pick a bottle and bring it to the table. And we brought a really, you know, completely different varietals, right? Yeah. Completely right. like price points on the gamut, right? Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I knew you would bring a a, a Pinot Dr. because that's your jam. Um, Fair. I knew I I knew I'd bring a Cab most likely because that's my jam. Uh, Brits and Gage were a wild wild card for me. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. Um, I wasn't sure what they were going to come with. Brit surprised me with the with the rosé. I thought he was going to go Italian, but he surprised me mm -hmm. with the rosé. Well, here's the thing. It's also, we do these typically at three o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Eastern. So that's cab drinking time for you on the East Coast. I mean, on the West Coast, this is, that's, this is rosé. This is like white wine time. This is early. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you know, unless I'm uh, visiting Steve and we're doing some tastings in the Valley, I, I typically don't go red to, uh, you know, early. Till about four o'clock, you know. Four o'clock, exactly. Yeah. Four o'clock. <laughs> we could push these back an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool one week if we um, assigned a wine to each other, something that we've never had, and you know, see how how the person receives it. Yeah, each. Well, of that's kind of that's kind of what I like about when we when we have the same wine because you know, again, like for people that aren't big wine, you know, aficionados, right, to see a bunch of guys like us, sort of normal guys that just like to drink wine stumbling through a conversation about what it smells like and what it tastes like. Uh, to me, I think that's what's fun about this, to hear how you, what, what's happening with you guys, um, how, it's in, how it's reacting with your you know, uh, chemistry sets and, mm -hmm. and what I'm getting on mine. Yeah, for sure. And I think in, ahead, say in the spirit of everybody being at home, I think we're all spending more time in the cellar. And it is kind of fun to see what we pull out. It doesn't have to be an expensive one in any way. Um, in fact, this bottle was about 20 bucks. Of course, that was a while ago. But uh, yeah, it's not about the price. I think it's just fun to dig a little deeper than we normally would on a, a normal Monday afternoon. Totally. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, it's right. Monday? Yeah. <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers to a Monday. And I think to, to Monday. Cheers. cheers, absolutely. And we've got. Uh, we got some fun stuff coming up. So, Seg, when do you want to, When are we going to post this? We might post it what today, tomorrow, whenever. We could post it today. That way, uh, we give a buffer day before we get into our next one. Well, might as or well. we just promo. We but we 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 post it tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and then promo Wednesday. Well, here's the thing. Wednesday, I think, because of some of our shipping delays, may move to Friday. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. So um, I was going to 
mention that to us, to you guys afterwards. So I think at this point we should sort of plan on Friday. So maybe we post it today or tomorrow and, and, you know, give ourselves a couple of days to have it up, but do you, you know, do you want to tease what, what, what we got well, on deck? I'm do that. So, so Friday now, uh, we're going to do a tasting with our friends at Davis estate. Nice. Indiana university graduate, Mike Davis. Thought that could I like, be, uh, I like Gage's response. Nice. <laughs> and guess who we're tasting with, uh, Steve? Who? An old friend of yours. Oh, uh, Pete? Yes. Nice. Pete, Pete knows his stuff. That yeah. guy's uh, a wealth of knowledge. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, I you think Jessica's going to join us as well. Um, Great. But, but Pete is going gonna, is gonna to sort of lead the, uh, the tasting. I think you should each come up with a really hard wine question just to mess with Pete. <laughs> he All studied right. more about wine than most people I know. So he's up for the challenge. And he yeah. comes out of your, uh, your, your minor wines fraternity where so yeah. many awesome, you know, people that work in the wine industry came out of. It was a good time. For sure. Well, I'll tune in and yeah, you know, give him a hard then, time. The following week afterwards, uh, we're doing, or Jessica's doing a linked tasting with us. Okay. So we're, uh, we're excited about that as well. We're all big fans of- Super of the pumped wine, for that one. The wine. So linked wine is uh, some of our favorite, uh, our, our uh, SNC friends here got me uh, some of that for uh, the holidays two years ago, I believe. Two years ago, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, two holidays ago and that is just outstanding wine do you uh, have any left i do i probably have four or five bottles left and then not a plug we're not sponsored um i was able to buy some more from wine bid uh they had nice. they had some on there um, and i was able to get another four or five bottles of the 2009 um linked uh from uh, wine bid which i thought was pretty cool Hey, but before we sign off, real quick, Steve, how's that wine doing? Is it holding up? Um, you know, it is. Uh, unfortunately, I just got a fly in there, but, you know, <laughs> the dangers of tasting outdoors. Protein. Yeah, I just tossed him out. Um, honestly, it, it's, it's held up much finer than I would have expected. Uh, usually with half an hour of oxygen, these wines would get really flat. But it's a testament to a, a great winery that makes high quality wine. Uh, it's well made and it, it's lasting well. All yeah, right. Not mad well, at it. Cheers to that. Thanks a lot, you guys. Look forward yes. to drinking more wine with you. All right. Stay, stay well, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. cheers. Stay cheers. home. Cheers.